Hello, welcome to Industry Voice by OCD Clinical. Galina, thank you very much for finding time to talk to us today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So why is RWE a hot topic today? There are three main reasons for that. The first is the obvious limitations of the clinical trials. First, the percent of patients which take part in the clinical trials is uh, very small in comparison to number of patients uh, who are taking the drug afterwards in routine practice. The period in which the clinical trial takes place is also limited, so we can't estimate long-term side effects. In some cases, the clinical trial is just not feasible, for example, in the area of rare diseases or unethical, for example, if we are talking about oncology trials, when um, it's just not ethical to have um, comparison placebo group. The second reason is uh, digitalization of healthcare. The amount of data is growing, the number of data sources is growing. The number of algorithms and methods for data analysis is also like soaring. Altogether, it leads to digitalization and uh, other additional methods for data capture and data analysis. And the third reason is pharmaceutical trends. It's already known that R&D return of investment is declining. Why is that? Because the development of molecule becomes more targeted and that means that the target market is also smaller. Healthcare systems are experiencing huge overload with chronic diseases because initially when they were designed, they did not expect to have such a load that they are now currently having. Therefore, regulators and payers have more demand. They are more demanding in terms of the evidence that is required. And at the same time, patients are becoming more vocal in terms of decision-making. For example, there are cases when patient-reported outcomes were part of uh, the dossier for decision making. So altogether, it dictates the necessity to have a credible evidence for subsequent decision making in healthcare. Thank you very much. That was a very thorough answer. And maybe you can outline the main trends in this area? Well, first, the data sources will be evolving. Their number will be growing and they will be evolving from the like standard data sources like electronic health records, medical records, they will of course remain. But um, what I'm observing now is uh, the growing number of patient apps in which the patient reported data is captured. Also, utilization of different sensors. Even in, um, in studies, like for example, watch or running shoes or any sensor that is attached to the body and can capture the signals coming from this body. Why is that important? Because it can help us capture digital outcomes. And these specific outcomes will be dedicated to therapy area. So they will be different for multiple sclerosis, for oncology, for, um, I don't know, cardiology, for diabetes, etc. Et we observe uh, the growing number of data capture platforms that of course need to be compliant with current regulations. We have been talking also a lot about the data structure and these data platforms can help us get the data in a structured format. And uh, that in case can help with data integration, with data coming from different sources, which is also the trend. Because we, for example, have uh, electronic medical record. We might have the sensor which has collected the data from the patient in home setting. And if we combine these data sources in one, let's call it a data lake, it's not a typical data lake, but let's call it like that, then the value of the data is growing significantly. And could you please name the pros and cons of RWE-driven clinical trials? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so such studies are not a panacea. Obviously, there are pluses, like for example, we can have the um, understanding of effectiveness in comparison to efficacy, which is observed in the clinical trial setting. We can have information on comparative effectiveness between different drugs, which is not a typical practice in clinical trials. As I have mentioned before, we can observe results in a large uh, scope of patients long-term, and we can have preliminary data 
for preliminary decisions. From uh, the perspective of um, minuses of such studies, the first problem is um, systematic error. Because there is no randomization, obviously there is a systematic error problem. Then the data, such problems as data access quality, data structure, selection of the right reference points. Um, I remember there was a case from one of the professors of IE Business School. I remembered it. He was presenting the case with the current COVID situation in city A, 30,000 people might die. Two alternative programs are offered. In the first program, 10,000 lives can be saved. The second problem, there is a one-third probability that um, 20,000 of lives will be saved and two-thirds probability that no one will be saved. And then he changed the question. So the setting itself was the same. Uh, the, the task is the same, so the same problem. And two alternative programs were offered. So he just changed from 10,000 patients to be saved to 20,000 of patients to die. Mm -hmm. So basically it was the same case, but he changed the reference points. And he was, when he was asking this question to the audience, the percent of the answers, the split between program A and program B, in these two cases that were exactly about the same problem, they were different. And what does it mean? It means that the selection of the reference points when we are talking about the data, when we are talking about real-world evidence studies, is crucial for providing the final result. Galina, thank you very much. That was very interesting. We wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you would like to be our next guest speaker, reach out. You can find the right email in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe.